Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jørgen Mugin and I'm the business manager of TrustDFX. I'm really pleased uh, to welcome you to this uh, webinar, one hour webinar with a title of uh, less power consumption and unbeatable UI performance on the TrustDFX plus STM32 L4 plus solution. Uh, this is hosted by Drought Graphics in close collaboration with ST Microelectronics. Just a minute. Okay. And here we have the agenda for today. In a minute, we will kick it off. Uh, Bertrand Denis from ST Microelectronics will walk, our, our, will walk us through the presentation of the brand new STM32 L4 Plus. Uh, uh, after this, I will give you a short introduction to TrustDFX before I will hand it over to our product manager of TrustDFX, Jesper Hedegaard, making a live demonstration of, of how you can actually start programming uh, with TrustDFX on the new uh, STM32 L4 device. Later, we will have a bit of tips and tricks for limiting required resources. We will uh, follow up uh, with a business model of TrustDFX and your contact points uh, contacting ST as well as, as Drautmark. We will finalize uh, with picking up questions. Um, actually, as we go along uh, during the session, please uh, put down your questions um, in, in, in the, in the uh, formula you, you have available on go, uh, go to webinar, and we will actually try to, uh, in writing, answer all the questions as we go along, and we will pick a few one up. Um, Verbally, uh, so uh, we will might uh, not be able to actually cover all questions as we are really really big group uh, this 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 at uh, this webinar. Um, so let's uh, let's kick it off, and I will hand it over to uh, Bertrand, and you can uh, I will make you a presenter presenter, and you can uh, take it from here. Please go ahead. We see you. We share your screen now. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for uh, inviting us for to this webinar. So my name is uh, Bertrand Denis. I'm product marketing on the STM32 L4, and I'm going to present you a new microcontroller called the STM32 L4 Plus, which is a new member of the STM32 Ultra Low Power family. So here are the key messages of the STM32 L4 Plus. So why plus plus? Because uh, in performance, we have stretched the STM32 L4 architecture to gain 50% uh, of performance and reach 120 megahertz with Cortex-M4 and the floating point unit while keeping the best in class ultra low power figures. Plus also in terms of graphics and innovation, with more innovative peripherals for graphic acceleration and display connection. Plus also for more integration, up to two megabytes of flash and 640 kilobytes of SRAM. A lot of digital and analog peripherals, with a large choice of packages, and with a size down to Five by five millimeter, and finally, the last message is regarding the great investment for the user uh, because of this pin-to-pin -pin compatibility all across the STM32 family, and also the user can reuse the large STM32 ecosystem. So the first message is regarding to 
the STM32 L4 Plus is, great, is regarding the, the greater performance. The STM32 L4 Plus provides 50 more of performance versus the STM32 L4 while keeping its excellence in terms of power efficiency. So it runs at 100 MHz, 150 drive through MIPS, with a Cortex M4 and 14-point unit. But it goes also with 2DMA, as well as a number of high-speed peripherals. And I want, what I want to mention, because it's new in this product, is the two OctoSpy supporting both North Flash and Hyperbus S1. So while it's very good in terms, I mean it's better in terms of performance, uh, the STM32 L4 Plus has kept the best in-class power conception figures from STM32 L4 uh, with a full flexibility. The user can select the mode depending on the wake-up time, the state of retention, and the number of sources required. This slide here shows some examples of ultra-low power modes. And as you can see, a lot of flexibility is provided to the user. The STM32 L4 Plus shows also a very low power consumption in active mode, down to 43 microns per megahertz. And the best in class power efficiency is proven uh, by the score obtained uh, in the ULP bench, both on core profile and peripheral profile. We are achieving 233 ULP mark CP, so for the core profile, and 56 ULP mark PP. So this is really something uh, best in class in terms of power consumption, and again, it's a product running at 120 megahertz, so it's really unique in the market. The second message is reading graphics, so plus means also more graphics. Uh, so we have the Chromart accelerator. Uh, the, the Chromart accelerator is a 2D graphic hardware accelerator which allows to release the core to provide advanced graphics. Several examples showing this feature are available in our demos, both on uh, discovery kit or evaluation kit, and you can set on or off the Chromart and check the impact on the CPU load. So very interesting features which allows to uh, release the core and better in terms of uh, graphic capabilities and also reduce the power consumption. Second thing is running graphics, so we have embedded on this microcontroller a large choice of different interfaces which is quite unique for an ultra-low-power microcontroller. So we have both the MIPI DSI, which, can, uh, which is, for example, uh, uh, shown in the discovery kit. We have the TFT controller interface. And we have also the parallel display interface with the uh, uh, FSMC. So a large choice of display interfaces. The STM32 L4 Plus bends a new innovative IP called Chrome GRC. This IP enables to minimize the SRAM size required for a frame buffer in the case of a non-square display. Typically, when you are using a circular display, you are losing 20% of the memory as the frame buffer needs to be squared. So the Chrome GRC with the Chrome GRC, you are saving 20% of the memory size in the SRAM. And thanks to the large SRAM size embedded, uh, 640 kilobytes, you can directly handle big display. I mean, for example, we can support 400 by 400 with 20 24-bit uh, 
NPDES side round display without any external SRAM. So thanks to this, to this embedded 640 kilobytes of SRAM. Or also uh, wide QVGA 16 bits uh, TFT display uh, without any external memory. So obviously, it's uh, a gain cost, uh, a bomb cost for the the customer as well as a power consumption gain for the final application. So yeah, that was the second message regarding the STM 42L4 Plus. We are bending more graphics capabilities in this device. First message is regarding the, the eye integration. So here is the, the block diagram of the STM 32L4 Plus. As you can see, a lot of peripherals and features are embedded. A uh, lot of communication peripherals, USB, UART, SPI, etc., etc., CAN. Uh, but what I want to highlight is again the uh, the fact that the STM32 L4 Plus offers a large memory size, two megabytes up to two megabytes of flash and 640 kilobytes of SRAM, and with a package uh, which can be down to five by five millimeter. The, fi the final message is regarding the great investment. So if you look at uh, all the STM32 portfolio, so it offers an extraordinary variety of compatible microcontrollers based on ARM Cortex-M cores, Cortex-M0, M0+, Cortex-M3, Cortex-M4, Cortex-M7, giving developers a lot of flexibility to find the perfect STM32 microcontroller for their applications. More than 800 part numbers are now in production in the STM32 family. So the STM32 L4 Plus is a great investment and benefits from the pin-to-pin -pin compatibility across the STM32 family. So now if you have a look at, uh, at the ultra-low power family, uh, you can see that there are already several members. So First, uh, first one is STM32L0, which is cost-effective microcontroller based on Cortex-M0+. The STM32L1 with Cortex-M3, which has a broad range of products. The STM32L4 that we launched two years ago, bringing more performance and excellence in ultra-low power. And now we are adding STM32L4+. Plus. And the STM32 L4 Plus completes the ultra low power family by providing more performance, more memory, and more packages. Here is the, the portfolio of the STM32 L4 Plus. It is available uh, now in 2 megabytes or 1 megabyte of flash and from 100 pin up to 169 pin in QFP, VGA, or CSP packages. So a lot of choice. You can also select with or without the crypto version. And in addition, several options exist with or without the MIPDSI or the TFT interface. And the good news is that all this portfolio is fully available and in production. And so it means that you can order it now. Some words about the STM32 L4 Plus ecosystems. In terms of hardware tools, a low-cost nucleo board for flexible prototyping is available. Also, discovery kits with more features embedded, like a MIPDSI run display, can be used. And finally, a full feature evaluation board is available as well. For the software tools, the STM32 CubeMX can be downloaded on our website. It enables to select the product and the package that you want to use, configure the peripherals, and generate a code in order to facilitate the design phase. You can also get an estimation of the power consumption even before starting the design.
we are providing as usual the embedded software. The first firmware layer is uh, made up from the low layer driver. That is to say the hardware abstraction layer, HAL, and the low layer, LLAPI. The HAL implements a high portability between STM32 series, while the LL API brings the performance aspect to the STM32 cube L4 plus software. The HAL abstracts the STM32 series from one over thanks to the highly portable sets of API. So entering an easy migration path from one family to another. While the low, low layer API are a lot closer to the machine and uh, constitutes a lightweight, high performance, expert oriented firmware stack for maximum dynamic reactivity and flexibility. For more convenience, the STM42 Cube L4 embeds firmware, uh, which comes from a, with a set of middleware bricks like USB, file system, etc., and graphics. We'll talk uh, more, uh, TGFX will talk more about, about uh, their solution. And in addition, of course, numerous examples are provided to help the customer to understand how to use the, the software. So, uh, as a conclusion, the, the STM32 L4 Plus is a unique microcontroller uh, providing more performance while using the state of the, of the art ultra low power technology. It provides more graphics and more integrations, 2 megabyte of flash and 640 kilobytes of SRAM. And it is a great investment because it is a pin-to-pin -pin compatibility of the rest of the STM32 family, and you can reuse the STM32 large ecosystem. You can get more information on the st.com slash STM32L4 plus, data sheet, reference manual, software, a lot of application notes, uh, technical training, which is really, really useful if you want to, to go uh, deeper on the STM32 Alpha Plus. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bertrand, uh, for this uh, overview of, of this exciting new new device uh, from ST. Uh, a few questions is uh, coming in, uh, and one is asking about target applications. Uh, what, what areas and, uh, of applications are this new device is focusing on? So a large, a large choice of uh, application, but obviously uh, uh, mainly all the application uh, running out of uh, battery. Uh, to name but, but a few wearable device, uh, of course with uh, the display uh, uh, capabilities uh, uh, also uh, a lot of, uh, uh, can be interesting for uh, HMI uh, display, uh, as well as uh, uh, industrial sensors, because uh, industrial sensors uh, request more and more uh, memory, and more and more performance, and this is a uh, unique features in the market, uh, also for, for metering. So, yeah, let's say all the, the battery operating system and the stm 42 l 4 Plus complements the the, the po big portfolio that we have already on STM32. Okay, okay, good, good. Uh, there are a, a few other questions, but but uh, yeah, we will probably uh, answer them uh, in, in in writing. Um, uh, <clears throat> uh, and from our perspective, our GUI perspective, uh, yeah, we we see a, a really powerful device uh, running a battery driven uh, applications. And we have been working with it uh, for some time now, and have a demo available, and, and you will get uh, access to, uh, to to this demo. Uh, what's uh, a, a video uh, on on later slides? I will take back um, the the presentation. Um, and I think I'm back here. Um, 
and I will move on to um, the next, uh, giving you a, a short presentation of, of, of TrustGFX. Um, TrustGFX is a license-based software tool. Uh, what it does is that it's actually making you capable of creating smartphone look and feel UIs based on microcontroller hardware. In order to give you an idea of how customers are utilizing the benefits of TrustGFX making high-end UI products, I will share a, a few uh, customer cases here. The first one is the, the French company, Somfy, making a remote control for shadows. Um, what what uh, Somfy uh, needed here uh, to save costs and to achieve a long battery life, yeah, first of all, they selected a black and white display and a standard uh, purpose microcontroller from, from ST. Um, with a combination of really nice graphical design and the capabilities of TrustGFX, a really unique uh, something uh, look and feel uh, was created and realized on this platform. And you can, you can read more on our website about this. The next one I will share with you is the US-based company iBeat. Uh, making a smartwatch with healthcare functionalities. Um, here for iBeat, it was extremely important to achieve a, what we can say, the real smartphone look and feel. And beside this, again, a long battery life. Um, a, a really yeah, high resolution Great uh, display, uh, a round display with a resolution of 400 times 400 uh, was selected. And to run it, an STM32 uh, device, the F469, a Cortex M, uh, was selected. And uh, TrustGFX was proven to be the pe best performing GUI library and best performing in the sense of getting the highest level of smartphone look and feel. So this is uh, instant responses, uh, gesture recognitions, uh, smooth transitions, and, and cool animations. Um, so, so here they actually achieved the smartphone look and feel they, 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 were, they were aiming at. These were two uh, use cases uh, uh, within the wearable sector. Uh, battery-driven uh, uh, applications. Uh, TrustGFX is aiming at a lot of other stuff, uh, but for this seminar, yeah, it's, it's the, the, the battery-driven we are focusing on. You can see much more in our website. A few words on what, uh, how we actually are stand out from competition. Um, TrustGFX was invented back in 2009 to run on microcontrollers. Everything we do, we focus on limit the required resources. And this is in terms of computing power and memory needs. So therefore, TrustGFX gives you the unbeatable UI performance. And TrustGFX is a very flexible tool open to integrate with any environment uh, and other tools you may wish to use. So in other, in, in, uh, in, in, so it's a flexible tool making you capable of being in control as a developer creating anything. And finally, TrustGFX uh, comes with a set of tools free of charge supporting the process from idea to UI product. Uh, the, one of the tools is the GUI builder, the drag and drop GUI builder with automated code generation. It supports both the graphical designer in prototyping and specification tasks, as well as it is supporting the developer in fast implementation. Um, we are continuously adding features, making TrustGFX 
easy to use. And we will now actually uh, demonstrate uh, how you can actually get started with TrustGFX. And I will hand it, the presentation over to Jesper. You just take it. Yeah, you see the screen? Yes, yes, great. Thank you, Jan. Um, yeah, so, so now for the demonstration of how to actually get up and running, starting to use TouchGFX. Um, so here on my uh, computer I have installed, I have downloaded the new version, the 4.9.2 uh, TouchGFX uh, installer, installed it here. Um, I have uh, ST-Link utility downloaded and installed on my PC as well. Uh, and actually that is the only two tools I need to get up and running on the on the ST hardware. So let me try to open up the designer and let's see if we can do a demo. Okay, so uh, here is the startup screen. We have uh, our create new application uh, window open. Um, for, for me to create a new application, I have a few things to select. So a name and a directory for my project. Uh, and then two components, namely the application template and the UI template. So let's, let me explain a, a little bit about these two uh, components. So one of them is the application template. This is um, the, uh, where I want to run this uh, application and uh, how I want it to be structured on my, uh, in my project. So right now the simulator is selected. So if I go and push create, I will have a uh, a project that runs only on the simulator on my uh, PC. That is not what I want. So I can ch click here and I get an overview of all the uh, supported boards from uh, from TouchGFX. I switch to ST Microelectronics and I see a broad range of of devices that are supported. Uh, today we are focusing on this device here, the L4. I can press the uh, info uh, button here and I can read more about the, the actual application template, what is supported. So here we can, re we can read that it supports IAR and GCC. It runs on free ARTOS and this resolution and, it's with and so on. We see a nice picture of the actual board. If I want to read more on how to get up and running on this, I can press this link here and I will uh, see a uh, installation guide for this. So I, if I use IR, I need uh, uh, at the moment a patch for, for IR. Here's what, how to download and how to install it. We need ST-Link Utility. You need a new, brand new version of ST-Link Utility. You can go here to uh, get the information how to actually uh, download this uh, from ST. Okay, that is the board I want to select. So now I've selected it as my application template. I can also choose which the starting point of my UI. So uh, by default it's a blank UI, but I can also go here and see uh, also a broad range of actual demos that I could uh, examples that I could start out from instead if I want to learn how to use animated image this would be a good place to look. Uh, I can press here and see the matching UI templates for the current selected board and right now on this display we have this touch TFX watch uh, demo. But for now I would select the blank UI since I want to start from scratch. I uh, press create, it downloads the components and combine them together and create the new project on my disk. Uh, okay, so here we have the designer uh, with a empty one screen and it is empty so I see the empty canvas here. Uh, okay, so I'll try to uh, start up my project. I will add a background for this, I select a widget in this widget list of widgets over here. It's a tiled image, meaning that I can uh, I can set a, a an image and actually I can stretch this, uh, not stretch it, but uh, expand it so that the tile will repeat itself. 
can be my background uh, for this screen. I would like some images in my application, so uh, I got some on my desktop here, so I have images here. I'll just select them and drag them to my uh, image uh, picker here. So now I can add a, an image to my to my canvas as well. Uh, I can select one of the imported uh, images. Let's just like touch the effects as it is a touch the effects application. I can edit it and put it here. Now I can uh, I have a, 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 my first screen here. So let's try to run the simulator, see if uh, everything is okay. So I can invoke that from within the designer. Of course, I can also compile it elsewhere. I'll show you that later. Um, but here I have the simulator. It shows the, uh, the screen that I have created. Not very uh, interesting right now, but let's, let's change that. So in TouchDFX, you, you have the widgets over here, and you have your screen uh, property here. Uh, on the left side here, you have the overview of, of your screen, the added uh, components. So I have my image here. It's called image one. And I, I can select it, and I can see the properties for it over here. What I also have on this screen is an interaction uh, pane here. Uh, so an interaction is a is a uh, trigger and an action. So when something happens, I want something else to happen. So here on my trigger, I have for this screen a hardware button is clicked or screen is entered. So let's select screen is entered, which is an event that is triggered when yeah the screen has uh, appeared, and the action I want to to execute is let's select move widget, so I can when when this trigger happens I will move a widget and the widget I want to use is the image one the touch the effects logo, I can select a position where I want it to move to this is uh, y minus hundred is above the screen. I can select a easing equation for this uh, for the movement, and I can select that this can be used as a trigger for another interaction. So let's try to uh, run that as well. And hopefully, I do not know the frame rate that you received this webinar with, but uh, you should see an animation of the actual image moving upwards. Uh, okay. So now I have that, a little bit more interesting, but not that interesting at all. So let's try a uh, uh, to change screen. So this could be a splash screen or something like that. So I add a new, sc a new screen here. Um, I can add a background to that so we can actually see it. So we have something on the screen. I can go back to screen one and add a new interaction. This interaction, so now I, I have another interaction is done as a trigger. And that is interaction one, the one I just did. And what I want to do is to change screen. I want to change it to screen two. And actually, that's it. So I can compile again, run the simulator, and we'll see it uh, in a short while. So now it compiles and actually executes uh, the TouchDFX application. And you can see I changed to the, uh, the new screen. Okay, um, so I'm uh, I'm ready to 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 make my let's say main screen here. So what I want to do here is I want uh, I want an image. Let's select an ST logo for this. Uh, I have it here, and then I could select a, a, a I will select a slider, which is a, a widget supported in, in Touch the effects. We have a bunch, a set of styles, a default looks that you can select for your for your slider and and whatever widget you choose. Uh, of course, you can and you should uh, use your own graphics so you can set the exact images that you want to use for this slider. Uh, but I'll go with the with the this uh, default style here. So now I have the slider on on my uh, screen two. See the animation again. We change here, and I have the slider doing nothing, but I can I can move it around. So what I could do here is uh, add an uh, an interaction here, and since we have a slider, I have a new set of things I can select. For example, slider value changed. I'll select that one, 
and it's the slider one. Uh, what do I want to do when this event happens? So I can do a, a lot of things. I could change screens uh, or like I just did, I could move something. But what I actually will do here is I want to execute some C++ code. I have two options, options there. I can either have this call a virtual function that uh, will be called and I can go and write the code in, in, uh, in my editor. I can also, since it's a, a small thing I want to do, I can also actually just select execute C++ code and write the code here in this small window. So this is for uh, smaller changes that you want to do. If, if it's a more uh, uh, advanced thing, uh, like for example, communicating with your backend system and so on, this is not the place where you should do it. You should use the virtual function and, and uh, write it in your editor. But for now, I would like to change the alpha value of my image, the ST image. So if you have a look up here, it's called image one. So I can say image one set alpha. So this is a, a, a function on, on the image widget. Uh, the value I would like to uh, use is slider one uh, get value, which is the current value that is reported by the, the slider. So this should update the, uh, the alpha value of the image. One thing I need to do is to call in valley uh, date, which will tell the framework that this image has to be redrawn. So now let's execute again, compile the program and launch the, the simulator. Yeah. We have, yeah. Uh, we have a, we have a, so, so, so now, now uh, uh, wait, wait a minute with that. Um, so here you can see now I am uh, adjusting the alpha value of uh, the image. Uh, actually, it's not fully solid here, so something is is uh, wrong. And the, what is wrong is that this slider here uh, reports, so it has a property here saying minimum, so when it's to the left it reports zero and maximum to the right is 100. But actually my alpha value should be, uh, should be, uh, it's an 8-bit value, so I should uh, report 255 at the right end. So let's change that and run again. Okay, and now we see it becoming full solid to the right. Okay, so we have this uh, application, and we are uh, have have seen the the simulator here. But uh, since this is all about the L4, uh, we will like to actually execute this on the L4 hardware. So here, uh, the application template that I selected for this L4 has the um, has been set up so that when I press Run Target here at the right uh, upper corner, it will compile, cross-compile it for the uh, ST hardware and actually use stlink utility uh, uh, command line tool to flash the board. So uh, I'll press that and uh, it will start compiling as we can see here and it will flash it afterwards. Okay, uh, good. <clears throat> a lot of questions are, are coming in, and, and, and some of them we are actually capable of, of answering in writing. Uh, a few of them is addressing uh, IDEs, um, uh, and one is, is uh, asking here, uh, can I, uh, is TrustyFX supporting Kai and JLink? Uh, this is, uh, and another one, uh, Jesper, is, uh, yeah, uh, what, of, what IDE can I use? Yes. Great. Um, so, uh, okay. Uh, so, yes, is it supporting Kyle? Uh, that depends on the, uh, the application template for the particular board. This particular board at the current uh, moment supports uh, IAR and GCC compilation. Kyle is also supported in general by TouchDFX, so touch, that's a uh, library for uh, linking with uh, Kyle, uh, and normally that is also included in our uh, application template. Since this is a brand new 
uh, application template. It does not at the current moment support Kyle, but it will it will in the very near future. Uh, IDEs to use. I would like to uh, yeah actually show that. Um, so what you can do in your uh, designer here is that you can press the browse code. That is, give me the uh, directory where your uh, where this cure project is located. So it is here. Um, so uh, a few uh, directories here. So we have uh, we have our our code here in the GUI folder. We have uh, our assets. That is the images and so on we want to use. We have the target folder here. So here we can see we have GCC. We have a make file for that. And we have IR both in seven, version seven supported and version eight. Um, we have a simulator. It is a GCC make file and a Visual Studio project. Actually, I'll try to start the Visual Studio. That might take a while. So um, let's wait for it. Um, so these are updated automatically by TouchDFX. Uh, and the designer. So what you can see here is that uh, when I open this application uh, structure up here, we see the screen one and screen two and the files that are uh, needed uh, for this. Uh, these screens are here. So if I open screen two, I can see this is my version as a developer version of screen two view. So here I can add uh, things I want to do. In the base class that I can jump to here, it is the part of this screen two view that is owned by the designer. So this will, you should not uh, tamper with this. This will be updated uh, when you generate code from the designer. You can see here we have the tiled image one, image one, and slider one. Um, this is the C++, uh, the, the source uh, file for, for this view. You can see here it's generated by TouchDFX Designer. And actually, we can see my code that I wrote in the designer is embedded here. Uh, but of course, you will not be able to do everything in the designer. So you will, you will uh, need to write a lot of, uh, not a lot, but <laughs> your application, the part that you will write in code, uh, the logic and so on will be in in this view and the pre uh, the presenter class you also have here. Um, when I create a new screen, this uh, will be updated automatically in the, I can try to do it, in the designer. So if I add a new screen here, generate code, uh, and go back here, you can see I should uh, reload. And now I have, uh, I have screen three and the new files here. The same goes for IR and Kyle. You can have the designer update that uh, those uh, projects as well, so that you can make your changes in the in the designer. Go and write your code, uh, enter IR and compile and flash from uh, within there without managing all the new files and so on. Uh, to the que <laughs> to the question about which IDE are supported, so these are directly supported from from uh, from TouchDFX, but of course, since TouchDFX and a TouchDFX application is C++ code and nothing else, you can uh, also set up a, let's say, an Eclipse project, add the files there, and call our uh, environment to uh, uh, use, for example, GCC and make to make uh, to create, build your your application and run it from within, say, Eclipse or, or anything else. So it's not a closed system. You can also just use an editor. If you're a, a, a Emacs a guru, you should be. You should just use Emacs, and uh, you can use our built environment to uh, to actually build your code. So we have a, a built environment here, a shell. So we can uh, go to our TouchDFX project. Let's call my project here, and here I can say make uh, simulator GCC make file and I will make my file and I have my output and I can I can uh, execute it from there the same goes for for Visual Studio of course I can build there and I can uh, run my um, simulator and debug and so on using the same uh, 
same way that I always do in Visual Studio. The same goes for IAR and Kyle. It's a C++ pro program that you flash the board uh, uh, with, and, and you can set uh, breakpoints and so on. Yes. <clears throat> OK, so that was uh, a brief uh, run through of the actual uh, how to get started on TouchDFX. If you want to have more information, you can go to our website, touchdfx.com, or support.touchdfx.com, where you will see our help center, where we have getting started articles, uh, knowledge base uh, articles about uh, all the details uh, in touchdfx. You can visit our forum, where we uh, have a lot of active threads about uh, all sorts of things. Yes. Thank you, Jesper. It's very good. I will take it back carry and carry on, on uh, with the presentation. Um, a little bit about a targeted platform and uh, required uh, RAM resources. Um, also, uh, actually, uh, answering questions about uh, operating systems and what is what is required. Um, we are targeting uh, display and better display solutions of our, up to around 10 inch uh, displays, uh, but actually we have no uh, limitation in touch GFX, it's more related to the, to the hardware. For operating systems, yeah, we run on any. Uh, the demos uh, you see uh, from our site, we are using free artists, uh, but we have customers running on, on all kinds of different uh, artists. Um, you can actually run with with on the bare metal without uh, an uh, operating system, um, and we actually have um, upcoming uh, Linux support. Uh, uh, so this is also uh, uh, an operating system you can use. Uh, a standard hardware setup for an UI application. Um, you have this here uh, to run uh, the display. Uh, and microcontroller or microprocessor, uh, some uh, flash to store images uh, primarily, and uh, some RAM uh, to have uh, the, the, the stack of TouchDFX, the application, and frame buffers. The normal setup is using uh, one or two, uh, no, normal setup is using two frame buffers. Um, in this case, uh, we can actually draw to one frame buffer and transferring uh, the other to, to, to the display. <clears throat> and having a, a, a really uh, smooth animation uh, with high frame rate. And uh, yeah, the frame buffer is actually uh, the, the part that takes up uh, most uh, memory here, uh, and we will focus on this. We have some general numbers of, of what kind of uh, uh, memory we need, uh, and let's focus on, on, on the RAM usage. Uh, the, uh, the library itself and application, yeah maybe around up to uh, 50 uh, kilobytes, but the, uh, the frame buffer, depending on, on the number of pixels, the resolution, and the color depth, uh, yeah, we can calculate. Uh, in this case, I have an example of an uh, 480 times 272, 16-bit uh, color depth, and two frame buffers, we are ending up in around 520 kilobytes of RAM uh, for, for two frame buffers. Uh, and this is uh, actually something that we see a big uh, push in the market, um, primarily for, for the high volume products uh, actually needing applications without uh, external RAM, um, saving uh, cost, uh, and as well as uh, saving uh, power consumption. Um, and what our solution uh, from TrustFX is, well, yeah, first of all, if you have available uh, RAM, in, 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 in internal RAM, place two frame buffers in internal RAM, and you will have a really smooth uh, and, and great uh, running application. Um, uh, and, and second option is actually to utilize uh, RAM in, in the display. Here you can place the second frame buffer and again have a really good setup. Uh, and this is actually the setup we have on the um, ST Discovery Kit uh, with, a, with a new uh, L4 Plus device. 
having one frame buffer in internal RAM and the second frame buffer placed in the in the RAM of, of the display. Um, but with the trusty effect technology, you will actually be capable of running with only one frame buffer and place this in internal RAM. Uh, you can still have uh, a really nice looking uh, smartphone uh, uh, UI. There's some limitations, but actually, yeah, you can actually go to the link here uh, uh, in, in this slide and, and, and read uh, a little bit about this, uh, uh, get access to video and actually uh, code uh, examples. And talking about uh, uh, RAM needs uh, and, and the frame buffer, it's of course really important to to know uh, what what it takes uh, to run uh, the 16 or 24 bit applications. This is what you need in order to to talk about a smartphone look and feel uh, differently 16 bit. But the application running on the discovery kit uh, here to to the left. Uh, it's running a 24-bit color, um, and the resolution 3, 390 uh, times 390. The availability of RAM in, in the new L4 Plus device, yes, 640 kilobytes. Yeah, this leaves sufficiently RAM uh, uh, to 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 run uh, with one frame buffer uh, uh, internal and and one frame buffer in in, in the external in, in the RAM uh, of, of the display. So for you getting started, uh, it's really easy. Uh, you can uh, go to our website, uh, get access uh, to TrustyFX evaluation version. It's a fully functional version, um, and you will get access instantly. Uh, with, with this, um, you can start exploring uh, uh, the, uh, the available application. Um, and if you have the kit uh, for, from ST, uh, yeah, you can actually start uh, seeing your applications uh, running on real hardware, um, and this you can do before you actually go uh, to to buy a license and start your development process. Yes, but also shortly mentioned that we have a lot of free resources on our website uh, helping you getting started, uh, getting started session, and a knowledge page, and uh, not less the community where you can put in questions. Uh, so, so please be free to, 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 to use this. The business model of TrustyFX, uh, the, uh, it comes uh, in a fully functional version, the evaluation version, um, and you can get access to this uh, from, from the website. Uh, moving into development phase, you need to buy a license, uh, and here we have the license model, it's uh, focusing and on the end product. So you buy a license per product. So if you have a, a, a microwave oven, uh, yeah, you buy one license for a microwave oven. And if you have another, you have a dishwasher, uh, you, you also buy a license, a new license for the dishwasher. Um, we have two, uh, two production volumes. Uh, if you have a, an annual production volume of up to 3,000 per year, uh, you pay 5,000 euro. You pay this one time, and you can produce up to 3,000 units every year of the lifetime of this product. Included in this 5,000 is the, the first year of support and software updates. Second year, it's optional if you want to continue with this. So again, you buy, uh, you pay 5,000 euro year one, year two, year two. Yeah, you can you can pay uh, for the update agreement if you like. Uh, if not, you pay you pay zero uh, the second year and so forth. If you need to go above 3,000 units, uh, up to 50,000, the one-time payment is 15,000 euro. Above uh, 50k, we will make a customized license. This we will do also if you have a lot of different product lines. Uh, we will customize the license matching your your, your needs, and the. Uh, the tools uh, coming with TrustyFX uh, is free of charge, so there will be no limitations in number of, of developers. Um, finding your, your contact points, uh, please go to our website. 
uh, here uh, we have listed all our distributors, all our partners ar around the world. Uh, it's not uh, completely covered, uh, but but we have a lot. Uh, go go to uh, uh, their websites and and, and get contacts, uh, your local contacts, or you can uh, go uh, to to uh, directly to uh, to us uh, and to me. Uh, you have my my email address here. Um, and for for ST, yeah, go to your local uh, ST office uh, or ST distributor contacts as 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 you are used to. So we are now uh, having a, a few time, uh, uh, five minutes for for picking up uh, questions. Um, and yes, but you have a question. Well, you have an answer on a question. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> so. Uh, where uh, it has been asked if uh, it uses if we use the Chrome art uh, for this or how to use the Chrome art the ST uh, graphic S acceleration. So for uh, in this application template, the port for this uh, board, uh, the Chrome art is utilized uh, fully. So when you, uh, for example, uh, draw uh, semi trans uh, or semi transparent images uh, the chrome art will be used and uh, and uh, low uh, micro uh, or MCU load as mentioned earlier in the slideshow is, is achieved and you as an application developer um, you do not need to to uh, think about this this will happen automatically when using touch the effects the same goes for the chrome GRC uh, for this port for this board the the Chrome GSE, the optimization for round displays, is uh, is used. So actually, the numbers that were shown by Jan earlier for the size of the of the display uh, for this uh, demo board, which is a round display, you have a 20% cut in the in the RAM usage. So you do not need 456 kilobytes; you need 365 kilobytes instead. Which is a huge save when talking uh, memory in inside the microcontroller. Um, we also had a question: if if we uh, if this application could go to the if we could flash the board with this application, actually I I, I pressed the run target button, but I never showed you that it actually run on the actual hardware. Uh, I can try to do that. I have a webcam. I don't know how good the quality will be, but now I'm trying to share it. So maybe you will see me. I have the board right here. We have the application running, and uh, I can I can set the alpha value here. <laughs> okay. So oh, no. no. Hopefully. An additional question here, yes, but. Um, what about my my own target hardware? How do I actually get that up and running? Uh, can I can I do that easily, um, as you can with? Uh, yes. So uh, even in the evaluation version of TouchGFX, you can change the hardware abstraction layer. So uh, if if you have a custom board or if you have modified your uh, discovery board from ST, you can. You can base it on a, a uh, an application template that resembles the one that you have, and then you can go and modify it. It's in in the source code, uh, so uh, you can change the configuration and and the use of drivers and so on. Uh, you can also start f from scratch, uh, doing a, a an entire port. Uh, of course, this will be uh, a bigger task uh, than than. Uh, if you can uh, you reuse some of what uh, we have done, uh, but this is is doable, and you can do it in the evaluation version, so that you can check your uh, TouchGFX application on your real hardware. All of this is, uh, of course, described in our uh, help center. Great. Uh, yeah, we we are close uh, to, uh, to to closing down here. Um, and Bertrand, one question for you, um, and a final comment. Uh, that's a question about uh, what are actually the main differences between the new L4 Plus series and and the and the existing uh, L4. Uh, what is actually the main difference? It's both and Cortex M4 core. 
So the major difference are uh, the 4 Plus brings more performance and uh, as well as more memory and more graphics. They are the main difference between the 2012 Pro. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay, we will uh, we will finalize, uh, and as it also has been answered, the uh, both uh, the presentations as well as the recordings will be made available to you uh, after after the seminar here, and uh, the questions we will we haven't managed to answer uh, yet. We we will answer uh, to you, so so all all questions will be answered. Um, and please uh, come back to uh, to us uh, with further questions and comments. We are we are here to support you and our support teams uh, around the world. Thank you for now to all of you. <laughs>